Testimony continued today in the most notorious criminal trial. In when I was 12 years old, my testimony sent my father to prison for murdering my mother. I decided at an early age that our trauma should not be what defines us. It's what we choose to do with it that does. I'm here to share my unique perspective on true crime, mental health, society, and popular culture, albeit with a slight sense of humor. I'm Collier Landry, and welcome to my show. It was the evening of February 20, uh, February 16th, 2022, and 33-year-old Microsoft executive and father of four, Jared Bridegan, had just dropped off his nine-year-old twins, a son and a daughter at his ex-wife's house in Jacksonville Beach, Florida, and was heading back to his own home in St. Augustine with his other two-year-old daughter in the car. He pulled over near the exit of the neighborhood called The Sanctuary, where he had spotted a tire that was just in the middle of the road. He was then shot multiple times as he was attempting to move the tire. His vehicle hazard lights were on and still blinking, and his daughter remained in the car unharmed. Unharmed. Interview police In an interview that police conducted with Shanna Gardner-Fernandez just weeks after Jared Bridegan was pumped, through, through of, uh, was pumped full of bullets with his two-year-old daughter in the back of the car, Shanna Gardner-Fernandez, who was arrested 18 months later, is now facing the death penalty if convicted in the case. At that time, she had coolly said, I just want the case solved and get on, and to move on with my life. Okay. I want to welcome new channel members, Lisa Ann uh, and Sharice F uh, Faum, or Faum uh, who just signed up today. Thank you for your membership. Remember, the Oscars are upon us. Please go and click the link and fill out your Oscar ballot. And if you win, you get a free t-shirt. Second place gets a mug. We have all of our results, uh, our, our results tallied so far, but you've got another 54 minutes until the Oscars start. Oy vey. <laughs> oh boy. Um, Mover Nation, wherever you may be and however you may be listening or watching, thank you for making me a part of your day. Uh, as you know, I'm Collier Landry and I'm here to give you my unique perspective on true crime, mental health, society, and popular culture. And albeit with a slight sense of humor, <laughs> thank God, thank God we all have a sense of humor. So a lot of you have asked me, what is, what is my take on Shanna Gardner? And, um, well, she is an interesting character. For sure. And as I, you know, um, you guys have asked me over the last couple of months, hey, will you talk about this? And so I decided I was going to do this same episode the other day, but we had the rust. Um, we had the rust uh, verdict come in live. So I had to postpone this. So here we are again. Um, so, yes, uh, yes, Marisol, Marisol does want to be a correspondent. And yes, she does have opinions. So um, we have our Oscar event. If you have not voted yet, you have now 53 minutes to vote before the Oscars start at 4 o'clock Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Um, the new, um, we also are starting this month. This is March. Uh, spring is upon us now officially. I'm so thrilled. We have an extra hour of daylight. It makes my day. Um, we have our AV Club, which is starting this month. We are going to watch my film, A Murder in Mansfield, and all discuss if I was, <laughs> Tina Levin says, if I was in a better mood, I would drink five times for the Oyve. Yes, the Oyve. The Oyve does. I have to do a, uh, I'll have to do a emoji for the Oyve as well. Um, please make a note of that, Court McNeil. The Oyve emoji. Um, but we have our AV Club, which is starting this week. There's going to be a new tier, which is a Thriver tier at the $7 level on Patreon and here on YouTube. After this month, that will be an additional tier that you guys can subscribe to. We'll do a monthly uh, watch party where we'll all watch live through Discord. It's going to be really great. I'm figuring out all the technical stuff right now, but it should be great. Um, and all of that. So uh, first this month, but if you're already at the $5 level, you can you have access to that as well. Uh, this month, we're going to do my film, A Murder in Mansfield, and I will give you guys kind of all the insight behind the scenes on that. That will be next Sunday. March 17th. So we'll have our live. And then later on that evening, we will do our, we will do our, um, live watch party. Uh, I believe, I believe Sunday said the 17th is going to be our day for that. So that'll be really exciting. I'm looking forward to seeing all of you on the discord. Um, so please sign up. There is a link. Somebody will put that in. There we go. Um, 
if you are in the, like I said, the $5 tier or above, you get access to this event. Um, so you have to, we'll, we'll have to check on discord for the link in your membership tier, but, um, it'll be great. <laughs> of course it's next Sunday. I, unless you guys do not, do not want it to be next Sunday. I am in, uh, I am in a, uh, this is a democracy here. So if y'all want to vote, uh, please give us a day. We could either do it that, or we could do it the middle of the week. Um, whatever everybody wants, but I would think Sunday evening would be a good time. We will watch it. It'll be great. Um, so, okay. Uh, oh, and one more thing. So, um, uh, if you are a member of the Patreon and a member of the YouTube channel, we have our live patrons only meet and greet, which is at the last Sunday of every month. It is a live meet and greet on Google meet. So we can all interact. It's very cool. So that will be two, uh, that will be three weeks from today. That will be Sunday, March 31st. And, um, yeah. Oh, I guess is it is the 17th Sunday, the 17th St. Patty's Day. Interesting. Interesting. Well, y'all can uh, y'all can fill your Oive mugs full of Jameson um, and uh, and <laughs> celebrate and watch. And we'll watch my film of Murder in Mansfield. It'll be exciting. That will be exclusively through Discord, however. OK, so Shanna Gardner. A very interesting character of uh, uh, just, yeah, just a, a very bizarre case dragging two families into, you know, as often these, these types of things do, they drag a lot of people into these scenarios and these webs of lies and this deceit. And a lot of people have been in, impacted by this, um, uh, including Jared, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Jared, Bride, Jared Bridegan's, um, uh, his, his now, well, widow who has been dragged in, they have children. She has been dragged into this. Um, and this man who worked as a maintenance worker at one of Shanna Gardner Fernandez's husband's property, who's also been arrested in custody. So I'm going to get into all of this here. Um, so obviously this took place on the evening of February 16th, 2022. He was 33 years old with his daughter dropping the twins off all of this. Um, Jared Bridegan, who that says here, Jeff Bridegan, do we mean Jared Bridegan? Um, So writing his ex-wife, 35-year-old Shanna Gardner Fernandez, drew immediate suspicion due to the couple's, again, ugly divorce and the fact that she did not attend his funeral, nor did she initially speak out about the crime. Gardner Fernandez and Bridegan shared custody of their children, and they had been married from 2010 to 2015. She went on to marry Mario Fernandez Saldana in 2018, and Jared Bridegan mar married Kristen who Kristen Bridegan, who is his widow, and they had two more children. She also drew attention when early on she hired a Jacksonville defense attorney, Hank Cox, to help protect her family from the publicity and the sensationalism that included photos of her children at a park and implications that she had been involved in the shooting. Now, also, it is of note that Shanna Gardner is from a very wealthy Mormon family they own a crafts, a, like an arts and crafts business that is very big in the Mormon, in the Mormon community. And she has a small fortune <laughs> at her fingertips. So uh, it, it, it's not really a crime that you, you could assume would be money motivated because she comes from money. Um, Shanna Gardner had told the times union quote, my kids are 10. They understand everything. And that, that is going on. They see this and they are scared, terrified, and struggling. Now, Gardner, who was originally from Utah, had met Jared Bridegan while visiting a friend in Florida in 2009. They married in 2010 in Salt Lake City, and they ended up in Connecticut, where rumors about Sh uh, Shanna and her personal trainer began to circulate. Now, Gardner denied having the affair, having having the affair when she spoke to the Times Union, which is where this photograph is from of her pose very nicely. Uh, denied uh, uh, denied having the affair when she spoke to the Times Union and declined to comment on the details of the divorce, saying that, quote, I don't see any good in airing our dirty laundry. 
our relationship was pretty complicated and remained pretty and remained pretty complicated. The court file, however, has about 300 entries and motions. She accused him of disturbing and abusive behavior towards their kids, and he accused her of spying on him and treating him in a disparaging manner manner in front of the children. On January 25th, 2023, Jacksonville Police Department announced the arrest of Henry Arthur Tenen, age 61, on charges of conspiracy to commit murder, second-degree murder with a weapon, as an, an accessory after the fact to a capital felony and child abuse. He pled guilty on March the 16th, 2023, and agreed to testify against Mario Fernandez Saldana, who was also arrested the same day in Orlando, Florida. Mario Fernandez Saldana, who's 34 years old, is charged with first-degree murder, conspiracy to commit murder, solicitation to commit a capital felony, and child abuse. He has pleaded not guilty to all counts. Now, on August the 17th of last year, Shanna Lee Gardner was indicted on the exact same charges. She was arrested in the state of Washington, where she had been living with her children, but without her husband. Now, prosecutors are seeking the death penalty against her and Fernandez Saldana. So one of the things is when all of this occurred and after her husband, uh, Mario Fernandez Saldana was arrested back in January of 2023, Shanna Gardner fled to the other side of the country from Florida to Washington state to hold, how, hold out. And that's where she is still being held. And one of the unique things about this case too, is that the governor of Florida Ron DeSantis actually filed a motion to have her extradited from Washington to the state of Florida to stand trial. That happened recently. Um, and it is normally governors don't get involved in this type of thing, but he specifically requested her extradition, extradition from the state of Washington, which is sort of a, a, a weird kind of that shows the gravity of the crime to the state of Florida, which has obviously their case against Fernandez uh, Saldana and also her as well. So um, it, it's interesting because, uh, you know, he's he interjected himself to show, look, this woman's not going to get away with this, at least stand trial here in uh, the state of Florida. So um, I thought that was pretty interesting. Now, this Henry Tennant character, so... Who is Henry Tennant and what was his connection to Shanna and Mario? So Tennant, uh, so um, uh, so Henry Tennant was born in 1961 in Hawkinsville, Georgia. He has a long criminal history, including an arrest for possession of a weapon by a felony and driving with a suspended or revoked license on a third or subsequent conviction for which he was incarcerated and awaiting trial for when he was arrested for the murder of Bridegan. It was discovered his last known address was the 5200 block of Potomac Avenue, which listed Mario Enrique Fernandez Saldana as the owner of the home from 2017 until October of 2022. Tennant had pleaded guilty to second degree murder and agreed to testify against any others potentially involved. He also said that he was the one that pulled the trigger and he will be sentenced to at least 15 years in prison up to life. Now they are considering his age and the sentencing, which uh, I believe has already happened, actually. Exactly two years to the day of Jared Bridegan's murder, Shanna Gardner and her husband, Mario Fernandez, appeared in a Duval County court for a pretrial hearing. The focus of the hearing was to set a date to hear arguments about an issue regarding evidence and whether or not the state attorney's office should stay on the case. The defense team say that the attorney-client privileged communications such as text messages and emails were uploaded to a next point share site and that prosecutors had access uh, had had access to and thus would like the state attorney's office fourth judicial circuit court to be removed from the case prosecutors have maintained that they did not open any documents quote we removed them we deleted them the prosecutor said we tried with good faith never to purposefully to purposely or intentionally read anything, any disclosures or any possessions were inadvertent. And we took immediate steps to remediate our possession of these when we realized that we had things that we were not supposed to have. Gardner's defense said after conducting depositions on this that they felt it was a bigger issue than originally thought. On February 16th, 
they indicated that they would be filing a motion to dismiss the indictment against Gardner, which they did on March 4th. Now this is March 4th as in last week. <laughs> and said that the spillage of her attorney-client information throughout law, the law enforcement teams, which are Category A witnesses expected to testify in this tra uh, trial, will amount to sufficient prejudice that we can never put the genie back in the bottle, and Miss Gardner can never get a fair trial, her attorney said. Her defense team had discussed the motion for her to have a bond hearing but it was agreed in court on Friday, February 16th, 2024, that this will not happen until the issue with the evidence and the state's attorney off, attorney's office is decided. Judge London Kite is overseeing the trial, but has decided to ask for an independent judge to hear the arguments over the evidence issues since it potentially involves attorney-client privileged communications. According to documents released the week of February 26th, 2024, or February 16th, 2024, Gardner and Fernandez were not the only ones on the investigator's radar. The names of two other people believed to have somehow been involved in Bridegan's death were redacted in recently released evidence. Neither has been charged yet. The warrant states, states one of the unnamed conspirators was a former reserve police officer who is also a convicted felon. He was known to own a 10, uh, uh, a 10 millimeter handgun. You mean a nine millimeter handgun? which is the murder weapon in this case, although it has never been recovered. When investigators interviewed the former reserve officer and asked to see the, to see the firearm, he said he did not know where it was. That warrant also states a relative of Bridegan told investigators that Gardner had commented about, quote, hiring a hitman to take him out back in 2017. The relative said that Gardner, quote, hated Bridegan and was frustrated by their custody arrangement and differences in parenting choices. Fernandez was quoted as saying the kids were better off with, Bri with, with Bridegan out of the picture. And apparently she had sold a lot of this to a uh, uh, also to a tattoo artist that was working on her because she has a lot of tattoos. So the first police interview. Oh, is it a 10 millimeter? Well, there we go. There's a 10 millimeter. Uh, you learn a new thing every day a 10 millimeter Glock. Apparently there's a 10 millimeter. I have never heard of that before. That must be a very special <laughs> firearm. Thank you, Karen fan for correcting me. I stand corrected. Obviously not a big, not a big purveyor of firearms in this household. So, um, yes, apparently there's a 10 millimeter Glock. There we go. Okay. So on March the 1st, 2022, Shanna Gardner and Mario Fernandez, Saldana came into police uh, headquarters to be formally interviewed. She told police that despite their initial date not going that well, Jared kept pursuing her and that she became desperate. So she decided to try and make it work <laughs> that they were married or they were married after two months and had children. She speculated that perhaps Jared had ulterior motives, knowing that she came from money. She said her son had a medical condition and that illness had put a strain on things. They moved from Utah to Connecticut so their son could be close to his specialists. Once he was stable, they moved back to Jacksonville where Jared's family had lived so they could help with the kids. But less than a year after moving, they got divorced and Shanna left the Mormon church. She said Der Jared had, quote, drained their accounts and the divorce was traumatic since Jared refused to move out of the house. She had shared that home. Uh, she shared that the home was purchased with money from her trust. But once the funds were removed from the trust, the property then became a joint uh, joint asset. She said Jared wanted his half of the proceeds from selling the house and that in March of 2015, he became paranoid and wanted everything written down. Now, it's interesting that he would want everything written down. I probably would too if I was in the middle of a contentious, a contentious divorce with someone who could possibly bully me out of my own, out of my own assets in a marriage. I don't know. It works both ways. Uh, he would not communicate verbally with Gardner during the divorce proceedings, and once it was finalized, he did not even want to be in the same room with her. So they had separate parent-teacher conferences and doctor's appointments, and that were done by phone. Gardner had stated that since she did not care, she would just uh, she would often just quote show up. So again, there were accusations of Shanna Gardner uh, having a relationship with her personal trainer in Connecticut. So you would think that 
in the midst of these divorce proceedings and in the midst of not wanting to see his his estranged wife that he that Jared Bridegan would not want to have anything to do with her and of course would not um uh would not uh you know would not be pleased with her if she was in fact having an affair so you really can't blame him uh, for wanting to have things, you know, written down in communication. I mean, that's always when you're separating from someone in a nasty sort of divorce proceeding. You want to have very clear and direct communication. I mean, not that I've been in a divorce, but I have been in relationships that have flipped upside down and gone sideways. And you want to have clear and effective communication. So I don't blame the guy for that. Uh, that's just my opinion. Again, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a psychologist, and I do not work in law enforcement. I'm just a guy who's been through a lot of shit. But it is interesting to see how she has sort of framed this whole thing with police in her first interview. So she went on to say that during their marriage, Jared was a hermit and only ever wanted to play with his, quote, toys and hang out with her. During family vacations, he was always happier hanging out in the hotel room instead of spending time with her family. And, you know, hey, maybe her family was awful. Who knows? Uh, Shanna said he was never physically or verbally abusive and barely even, quote, yelled at her. But he would always have a rude undertone, especially in text messages and emails. Again, one of the things with communication and using communicating you know, mobile devices and sending text messages is a lot of things can be misconstrued as condescending or underhanded or rude when they're really not. It's just a way of you're reading a text instead of hearing the inflection of someone's voice. So I can understand how things can be misconstrued in that type of scenario. Uh, and her maybe saying he has a rude undertone. I can see how that could be possible, but it doesn't mean that he was actually rude to her. Um, it's interesting. Subtext is very important for sure. And context as well. Um, she also said that he could quote, be very bipolar and that Jared's family friend, who was also a therapist would often tell him about the quote deficits in his personality and asked if, and asked Shanna, if Jared would be interested in seeing a therapist. Emotions were heightened during the war, during the divorce and that he had quote changed. She told police that when they were living in Utah and then Connecticut, he would not let her have friends and he was often full of suggestions on how she should dress and her appearance. She stated they did finally go to therapy, but it was too late by then. She said that during therapy, Jared would state that he didn't have any problems and that she was the one who needed to change, which, you know, doesn't make for a good, a good marriage for sure if there's no compromise. She stated venting to, uh, she started venting to people at the YMCA and began to realize that their relationship was quote, not normal. She became emotionally involved with a trainer at the gym. And once she realized her feelings were deeper for him than for her husband, she felt that that was quote, the beginning of the end. She said that Jared had assumed she had an affair, which he started telling people, including fellow church congregation members, and then started to, quote, bash her publicly. Now, this is interesting because there's a little bit of, as I'm looking at this, you see a little bit of like a subtle undertones of narcissism that might be, and look, again, I'm not a psychologist, but just having experience in this, and I've watched a lot of content recently about narcissistic abuse and behavior, um, you see a little bit of subtle undertones of this or at least what she's outlining is perhaps being a sort of um, narcissistic manipulation or abuse. Uh, the smear campaign comes into effect. If he believes that she is somehow doing something that is against their marriage, or if she believes that he is having an, an uh, she is having an extramarital affair. Sorry, I can see my hair is getting all wild here. Um, if she believes that he is, uh, he believes that she is having an extramarital affair by him starting the quote smear campaign to uh, lay the groundwork that she's a bad person, you can see that kind of happening. You know, I'm not here to criticize the, the you know those who have passed on, and he seems like he is, uh, is somewhat of an innocent person in this scenario, of course. Uh, and driving with his daughter, no man deserves to be, no person, period, deserves to be gunned down and or disposed of in this manner. This is absolutely horrific. Um, but you can see that there's a little bit of what I would say, a little bit of a fracture in their relationship. And maybe there is some, uh, there is some underhandedness going on in the communications that they're having with other people around them. Texas Rosas P says, Hey, gorgeous call your Texas sends hugs to you. 
thank you so much for uh <laughs> uh and tina tina luffin says the story of my life call here yes i hear that clear and key, uh clear and honest communication is key to any relationship absolutely um but thank you uh thank you rose sp i appreciate that um so yeah so kind of seeing a little bit of a uh and again, this doesn't mean that this man deserved to be treated in the way that happened to him, but there are a little bit of, from what I'm seeing in this statement is, uh, you know, the smear campaign, maybe he was, he was being a little aggressive with that, which would lead to this rather contentious divorce. And then this communication of like, we will only communicate this way. And this is how I appreciate all communications from this moment forward. I understand there's a lot, there's a lot of similarities, uh, to other, other, you know, uh, abusive relationships, at least in my own personal experience. So Shanna Gardner said she went on. So during her, uh, again, her interview with police, she said she went on to say that when they were first separated, Jared did not know how to properly care for the children and that this caused issues for them, but she got them into therapy, which he did not like the ex couple referred to Jared spending time with the children as date night. Um, and that it was every other week, originally from 5.45 to 7.45 p.m., but it switched to 6.30 to 7.45 p.m. around December of 2021 due to their daughter's gymnastics. When police asked if they shared plans with each other, Shanna stated that they did not, but often would ask the kids what they had done and when, uh, when they had returned to the house. Typically, Jared would text upon arrival, and the kids would go out, and get in the car and at the end of the night they get dropped off and come in through the garage she said that evening she was at the stove that would be the evening of february the 22nd 2016 or i'm sorry <laughs> february 16th 2022 the night that jared bradigan was killed she said that evening she was at the stove with headphones on after returning from walmart mario had a headache and was asleep now this is mario saldana fernandez who is her husband or fernandez saldana um who was her new husband. Uh, Mario had a headache and was asleep. Her daughter liked to wait outside for Jared to turn around in the cul-de-sac and come to the stop sign so they could wave goodbye to each other. She said her daughter was very adamant at the time of drop-off, which was 7.48 p.m. She asked if the kids had mentioned anything uh, anything off about that particular evening, and she said no. The only thing mentioned was that he was on a work phone call when they first arrived at the restaurant and they had to eat quickly to make it home in time. She stated that the family did not want her at the funeral and out of that and, uh, and out of that contention had come up because she did not allow the kids to go to the funeral either. She said they were handling all this better than expected, but are still in shock. Her son got upset when quote date night came around and her daughter spoke about missing her half sisters. When uh, she was asked if she would be open to uh, open to her children talking with the child psychologist, and she stated she would need to ask their therapist and then get back to them. She did agree to the, to the interview, which was scheduled for March the 4th, 2022. When investigators asked her about Mario, she stated that they had been married on Friday, the <laughs> Friday the 13th in 2018, and that one uh, originally knew... Uh, that no one originally knew that the two got married. She said at the time that they did not know each other very well, but that Mario wanted to help with the kids and Jared wouldn't allow it unless they were married. She knew it would not be a typical marriage, but one of convenience, but hoped it would build as she wanted what was best for her kids. She said Mario had only met Jared once and in, in court and that he would, and he would not shake Mario's hand. Now I, uh, <laughs> Honestly, like, I'm not surprised, especially if he thinks that, you know, his wife at the time was two timing, et cetera, et cetera. I'm sure that she probably wasn't, uh, wasn't, too, I'm sure he probably wasn't too thrilled either that this other man was, you know, raising his kids, quote unquote. Um, she said that Mario went to pick up the kids and he purposely knocked on the door because he knew it would upset, it, it would upset Jared. She stated she avoided confrontation, but Mario did not. She said that prior to marrying his second wife, Kristen or Kirsten, Jared was engaged to someone else who was living uh, and was living in Utah. He had a good job and was making good money, but he took him, but, but she took him to court for child support since he was struggling to pay the bills despite working three jobs. 
since she was struggling to pay the bills despite working her three jobs. He allegedly stated that he would quit his job and move back to Jacksonville in order not to pay the child support, which he did. He took his fiance with him, but she left shortly after arriving. <laughs> she said, I'm going back to Utah. Forget this Florida mess. Shanna said the fiance texted her frantically saying that they had had a fight and the police were called. Shanna offered to have the fiance come up to her house so she wasn't just driving around upset. She stayed for two days and then moved back to Colorado, even though she was from Utah. <laughs> she told police that Jared wanted his, uh, wanted his fiance to be referred to as by their kids as, quote, mom, and that she was supposed to be a, quote, biological mother. After the fiance left, he met and married Kirsten two months later, and the same conversation came up. She then provided the name of the ex-fiance as Emily Voringer or Voringer. The last thing Shanna Gardner mentioned to the police was that the quote timing of all of this is just weird. Quote, the timing of all of this is just weird. As she had decided to quote, let it go, let go of her frustration and just make the best of the situation. She admitted in moments of anger. She thought of how much easier quote this would be, but ultimately wished no harm on anyone. She said she was willing to do whatever she could to help and asked if investigators wanted text messages between herself and Jared, but her attorney intervened and said they'd have to be requested through them. Um, so the first police interview, so that is Shanna Gardner's first police interview with uh, the police. Which, as I said, brings up a lot of interesting questions about their relationship and almost kind of sounds like she was just kind of rolling, trying to roll with the punches and maybe Jared Bridegan was a little weird with her. I don't know. I mean, again, if there's dynamics of having like emotional ties to another person and a, and a potential love affair in another state, I think that that's a lot to, uh, a lot to sort of take in for a man or a woman. And, uh, Hey, cat loves cat skills. Thank you so much for the, the super sticker. Uh, yes, I agree. It is a lot of trauma to bring these kids around. This sounds like a very, um, a very, very, um, a very dramatic family environment and traumatic family environment for these kids who have just been around this whirlwind of just, of just craziness and, and sort of instability really. Um, so I definitely feel for that. I mean, it sounds like any typically disgruntled family unit with multiple partners coming in and out. I mean, one fiance, you know, Jared Bradigan jumping from one fiance to the other and getting married and within two months. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a lot. It looks like he was searching for a lot. She was searching for a lot and she married uh, Mario Fernandez Saldana out of convenience. Oh, it's a whole thing. And was hoping their love would grow. I don't, you know, look, I've never been married and I'm not, the per I'm not someone who can pontificate on how to have a, a, a very successful or healthy relationship by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that this is not how to do it. Jumping from partner to partner and not being settled. So the first pol police interview of Mario Fernandez Saldana, Mario Fernandez Saldana described how he met Shanna Gardner while he was working at the black hive CrossFit gym in Jacksonville beach, Florida. He said he was introduced to, to the children at this time. He described between the, the relationship between himself and Shanna Gardner as unique due to the dynamic with Jared Bridegan. He explained that they had, they had, quote, sealed the deal very quickly as he was not able to have a role with the children until they were married. He said he attempted to speak to Jared Bridegan once after he was married to Shanna Gardner, but said Bridegan did not respond to his request. Conversations between the two families were usually conducted via text message and emails, which of course would, you know, allow for that, uh, that bit of miscommunication to uh, come about for sure. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, Putting up my little banner as well. And thank you so much, Marie Hathaway, for the uh, the super sticker. I greatly appreciate it. Um, 
yeah what a like what a what a mess what a mess um Mario Fernandez Saldana said the conversations between the two families were usually conducted between uh, via text message and email and that Mario described Jared Radigan's communications as, quote, pestering. He gave an example of a specific situation in which he was picking up the children from Radigan. He walked up to the house and knocked on the door. The kids answered and they told him he was not allowed to knock on the door. Normally, the kids would leave when uh, when whichever parent received a text message that they had arrived. Mario told the kids that he he could do whatever he wanted, but Bridegan later sent an email to Fernandez stating that he would file a restraining order if he ever came to his door again. <laughs> what a contentious relationship. And again, this is like, none of this is ever good for the kids, right? Involving the children in this nonsense is just, is, yeah, is not good at all. Um. He said, uh, he said the kids were afraid to ask their father questions over fear of rejection. His daughter once asked if he could dye her hair purple, and she said she would not be accepted into the church with purple hair, meaning the Church of Latter-day Saints, the Mormon church. He also described taking the children to meet a bishop for the church in Neptune Beach, uh, who he was friends with. Apparently, after that, Bridegan confronted bishop, a bishop about being friends with Gardner. Uh, the bishop allegedly said that Bridegan had been then uh, it said that Bridegan then began driving by his house and he was considering taking legal action. Uh, Saldana elaborated on quote date night when Bridegan picked up the children. He would arrive and text that he was quote there and the children would exit the house and get into the car with their father. When they came home, they would go through the garage as, as, as if it was open. And if it wasn't, they knew how to work the security keypad. The dogs would always bark, alerting them the kids had arrived home. He said no one ever texted, no one ever texted the other parents saying the kids had been dropped off. The night of February 16th, 2022 was a regular quote date night. And Fernandez, uh, um, Saldana had explained that uh, Fernandez had explained that when their dad arrived at 6.30, Jared Bridegan had arrived at 6.30 p.m., he texted here and the kids went out to the car. They returned at 7.45 p.m., which was the agreed upon time, and he did not see the kids, but he heard them enter the residence. He also said that the kids, uh, that uh, he also said that in the next breath that he and Gardner had asked about the kids, uh, uh, asked the kids about date night, and that the kids said they went to the restaurant, the bearded pig, and then it was fine. But their dad was on the phone for a while before they entered. He said that he was uh, he was racked out on the couch uh, because he wasn't feeling too well. And that once the kids came in, he went upstairs to shower. He said he heard Shanna greet the, greet the children, but that, but that he was really out of it due to taking medication called Gefalbatine, uh, Gefalbatine, I have no idea what that is. He elaborated that the, that he takes the medication in high doses and becomes zoned out. And that evening he was more out of it than anything. Mario explained that the drug was a nerve bro blocker, which he uses for pain and headaches, but that the medication makes him drowsy, especially since he takes it in high doses. Takes it for headaches? Like what kind of headaches are you having, man? I don't know anything about, uh, I guess, uh, I guess it's maybe gabapentin is something that's similar. I don't know. How about a Tylenol? <laughs> How about some Advil, man? Um, who knows? Who knows? Uh, he said that, that after the children went to sleep, he did laundry and that Gardner did other chores. They were getting ready for bed when the detectives arrived to inform them of Bridegan's death. This again is on the evening of February 16th, 2022. Mario said he thought originally that they had come to the door because of the ongoing disputes over the animals in the neighborhood. Fernandez Saldana said that Bridegan was confrontational, was a was not a confrontational person face to face, but rather a quote keyboard warrior, and that he would avoid Gardner when they were at doctor's appointments. He fought Shanna against placing their son on ADHD medication, and said that uh, and said the ex couple had many disagreements over lots of medical issues with the children. They also fought uh, fought over the children's education. Fernandez had said that said they had taken Bridegan to court over placing the children into a private school. Gardner agreed to eliminate child support payments if Bridegan consented, but he did not attend parent-teacher conferences with Gardner and Fernandez. 
The children were also in therapy, which Bridegan also disputed. He said he did not want them attending therapy because they would, quote, talk about him. Mario said that he had felt Bridegan wanted to control, wanted control over the children, and he felt it would be better off if the custody was 60-40 in Shanna's favor. He said he wanted to force everyone, uh, everyone together for the sake of the children, and he didn't care if anyone was uncomfortable. They could just, quote, suck it. <laughs> he admitted that he could he could be confrontational, that he, Mario, could be confrontational, and that, they, and that if they had control of the custody, he would have been able to shut down Bridegan easy, uh, uh, easier. When asked if wh what he thought happened to Bridegan, he stated that while it was just speculation, you didn't have to get in line if you were looking for people who didn't like him, including quite a few members of his own church. He felt that Bridegan must have known who was in front of him because if he didn't, at the sign of trouble, he would have either run over them and sped away. He would have uh, either run, run, run over them or sped away. He said, since, uh, he said since himself and Gardner would not be welcome at the memorial service, they would not allow the children to attend either. I just want to take a second to acknowledge the fact that there was an innocent two-year-old child waiting in the car for her daddy when there was a hail of bullets all around her. Well, apparently this is what he said. <laughs> um, uh, the child's mother, uh, Kristen, said in the event that left her child in shock. She said, she said, quote, she talks about it a lot, Kirsten said. When she talks about what happened, she calls it the boom. She says, Boom, 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 daddy on the ground. Now that, of course, is the most horrific thing because there's a child who literally witnessed the murder of their parent, which is, you know, which is horrific to be in a situation like that. Just uh, absolute, absolute madness. So the latest updates on this case again came from March the 4th, which was late Monday evening, March 4th, 2024. The attorney for Shanna Gardner had filed a motion to have the indictment against her dismissed. In the legal filings, the, attor the attorneys, quote, request this honorable court to dismiss her indictment or in the alternative, disqualify the state attorney's office of, for the 4th Judicial Circuit Court of Florida and exclude that all pretrial hearings and the trial and trial, the use of all I messages sent by Miss Gardner, regardless of source. So they wanted to exclude, as I was saying at the top of this uh, of this program, they want to remove all of her I message text messages from evidence against her. The grounds for this motion are the state's willful knowing and intentional violation of the attorney-client privilege and the egregious disregard of a court ratified agreement to use as a screening team uh, and used to use a screening team. Her attorneys allege that throughout the 24 page filing that concerns about the attorney client privilege communications were downloaded from her Google drive, iCloud and other Apple devices. They also allege that the agent from the U S secret service was ill-equipped to serve as a member of the quote screening team and had no training and was given no protocol to file or to follow. The filing goes on to say that in April of 2023, a detective with the Jacksonville Beach Police Department, presumably in, associ in association with the ASA, which is the assistant state attorney, uh, Stifler obtained a warrant um, to obtain a warrant to get her Google data, but made no mention of the agreement of the screening team to remove the attorney client communications. The filing alleges that the Secret Service agent in charge of filtering the iCloud material would reach out for legal advice to what was privileged if he was unsure. The attorneys allege that ASA Stifler was, a, was directly informed of the contents of the privileged communications and that his contact was patent, patently improper. The motion goes on to say that, quote, law enforcement also engaged in outrageous government conduct in efforts to circumvent the party's court ratified agreement and the team's review of Miss Gardner's I messages before they would see them. So Agent Stifler did something improper. American Pie comes to uh comes to uh 
it comes to mind right about now. <laughs> and Sean William Scott. Oy vey. Oy vey. That is a lot of stuff to swallow. So what do you guys think of this case? Uh, because many of you, as I said, had requested me to start opening the door to talk about this because there just seems to be a whole hodgepodge of malfeasance going on. So now a little bit more about Henry Tenen, who was a caretaker, I believe, on one of uh, on one of uh, Mario Saldana, uh, Fernandez Saldana's properties and his arrangement. So there was a trail of something like 70 uh, text messages or emails that went back and forth to Henry Tenen and um, and Mario uh, Saldana which are which is what has traced everything back <laughs> to him and why he turned state's evidence because and why he was even uh, uh, Mario Sedona was arrested is because of this particular text message chain um I'm going to look this up so uh Jacksonville uh this comes from news for Jacksonville. Uh, Henry Tennant, who pled guilty, who pleaded guilty to the second degree murder in the conspiracy to kill Jerry Bridegan, made a brief appearance in court on Monday for a potential for a pretrial hearing. Tennant has agreed to testify against others involved in the murder for hire case, including Bridegan's ex-wife, Shanna Gardner, and her estranged husband, Mario Fernandez. Tennant once rented a home from Fernandez, and investigators said bank records showed three handwritten checks that Fernandez wrote to Tenen. The amount of the checks was redacted from Fernandez's arrest warrant. Investigators said when Tenen was arrested on an unrelated felony driving charge in August of 2022, they questioned him about Bridegan's murder and a Ford F-150 that they had been searching for since the shooting. Tenen was then charged in January of 2023 for Bridegan's murder. The plea agreement that, um, that was signed by Tenen shows that he faces at least 13, 15 years in prison, the sentencing uh, judge will give weight to Tenen's life expectancy and his early, early and continuing cooperation in the prosecution of co-defendants. Bridegan's family will have input on Tenen's sentence. Bridegan, who was a father of four, was shot multiple times at close range in February of 22. After uh, February of 2022, after dropping off his two older children off at Gardner's house. But there is a trail of checks, <laughs> and. There is the uh, the Ford F one fifty, which is uh, which was named in this particular uh, incident, and was uh, uh, the incident was in the roadway with the tire, and the tire was part of this Ford F one fifty that was laying in the middle of the road um, because it was a single lane road that um, Jared Bradigan was driving down on that fateful evening of February sixteenth, twenty twenty two. So, what do you guys think? Uh, I think this case has a lot of really weird details, lots of weird back and forth. It reminds me a lot of the Adelson, uh, the Adelson case and involving the, um, um, the murder of Dan Markell in a lot of ways. I mean, both ironically take place in the state of Florida. Uh, there are, seem to be a lot of similarities. I think, uh, in my own personal opinion, I think, the Adelson family was a lot more controlling than it same, seems like um, uh, Shanna Gardner's family was. It doesn't seem like they've had a direct involvement, but it does seem like perhaps that her now estranged current husband, um, Mario Fernandez Saldana, he all of a sudden has, um, uh, he all of a sudden, you know, maybe, he, maybe he decided to take things into his own hands in a way to, uh, appease his wife. I mean, she had said in in her um, in her statement that she had gotten married to him so quickly, so he could she could have interactions with the children because Jared Bridegan would not allow her to uh, her and her husband to have interactions with the children unless they were quote married. So she rushed into the marriage hoping things that could be developed. So maybe this was one of his ways of proving proving himself to his wife Shanna Gardner. Who knows? That's kind of what it feels like to me in this particular situation. That's my sort of takeaway. Again, at the end of the day, not only did a young man lose his life over this, but there's children who no longer have a father. And there was a young, 
a young girl who is from another marriage who had nothing to do with Shannon Gardner that is now forever traumatized as her mother, Kirsten, uh, Kirsten Bridegan had said is tra traumatized. Boom, boom, boom. Daddy on the ground. Again, I, you know, uh, things like this, you know, I, I talk about a lot on this program is why, uh, you know, these consequences of violence, why, why these things occur, why people take the, these matters into their own hands. Um, you know, is Shanna Gardner essentially an innocent pawn in this as well? And she was just trying to move on with her life. And then this, this estranged husband of hers now, Mario Fernandez has acted out and, and was doing something to prove himself because he obviously had connections to Henry Tennant, who, who has already admitted to slaying, um, Jared Bridegan. Who knows? I mean, it, it could be as simple as that, but all we do know is we will find out. I want to say a big thank you to all of my channel members and all of my channel supporters and all of my Patreon supporters. Without your support, this channel, this program would not be possible. Thank you all so much. All of my subscribers, thank you all so much. If you wouldn't mind, please click the like button if you're enjoying this content. I greatly appreciate it. It helps out with the algorithm. Uh, Mover Nation, thank you all so much for, uh, for tuning in. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, and I, and, and all you guys showing up every week, sorry about the technical difficulties that started the program. Uh, and I'm very excited. I have talked a lot about, there's a lot of, uh, shifting sands in my life personally and professionally. There's a lot of really cool stuff that's happening, um, coming up and oh, and by the way, on our next meet and greet at the end of the month, you guys will get to see the sizzle reel for my new potential series that I am creating, um, that is out there currently. I'm going to share that with you guys as well. Um, so that'll be an exciting thing to look forward to in this month's uh, members only uh, channel meet and greet Pat Patreon uh, members and YouTube channel members. If you are a supporter, financial supporter, you get to do our live monthly meet and greet and you guys get to all interact. It's on Google meet. It's super fun. Um, and I'm going to share, uh, share the sizzle reel for my new pilot uh, that I'm working on right now, which is very exciting to me. Very exciting to me. Um, but again, lots of changes coming to the channel. Lots of changes coming to this content uh, because uh, now I have some more time on my hands, wrapping up a lot of loose ends. I've been talking about this, alluding, alluding to this for the last month and change, but a lot of really good things. I'm very, very excited about to bring you guys some more content and um, and some different content than what I've been presenting in the last uh, last almost year now. Um, going to make some really big changes with the channel, and I'm so excited that all of you are a part of this journey and joining me. Mover Nation, I love all of you. Thank you so much. Please, again, click that like button on your way out the door. Until next time, I'm Collier Landry. I'll see you on the next one. This podcast is made possible by support from listeners just like you. For exclusive content around this podcast, please consider supporting me via Patreon by going to collierlandry.com forward slash support. Please subscribe via Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts from. And please leave us a five-star review. If you want to see video episodes of this podcast, please check out my YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash collierlandry. You can find links to additional resources in the show notes of today's episode. This podcast is a production of Don't Touch My Radio. Copyright, Collier Landry.